Hi guys, it's me Jessie and welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make a men's shirt for my husband. This is my Valentine gift to him this year. I never made any men's clothes before, so it took me a while to figure out the patterns. And that's why I'm pretty sure this pattern making process wouldn't be that perfect or totally correct. But it turned out wasn't that bad for me, so I hope you guys will learn something from it. And let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the shirt. To make the front bodice pattern, I draw a straight line and a horizontal line cutting each other foot. From the cutting point, I mark up 7.5cm, which is 1 by 5 the next side minus a half cm. From the cutting point, I keep marking up 22cm, which is a half of the shoulder side minus a half cm. From this new mark, I draw a perpendicular line with it and mark it 5.5 cm on this line, which is 1 by 10 the shoulder side plus 1 cm. Then connect this mark to the first one on the straight line to create a shoulder line for the front bodice. From the cutting point on the horizontal line, I mark to the left 8 cm, which is 1 by 5 the next side. Then drawing a curved line from that mark to connect to the first mark on the straight line to create a neck line for the front bodice. From the first straight line, I draw another one at 27 cm from it. It's a quarter of the bust side plus 3 cm. From the cutting point between the new straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up 27 cm, which is a quarter of the bust side plus 3 cm. After that, I continue the perpendicular line at the shoulder to cut the bust line at one point. From this cutting point, I mark to inside of the bust line 2 cm. Then connect this mark to the end of the shoulder line. After that, I mark in the middle of the new slanted line. Then drawing a curved line from the mark on the burst line through this mark and finish at the end of the shoulder line to create a slit line for the front bodice. From the first straight line, I keep drawing another one at 67 cm from it. It's the length of the shirt from the shoulder to the hip minus 3 cm. From the cutting point of this new straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up 27 cm, which is the quarter of the hip side plus 2 cm. It's also the same with the mask on the burst line. Then connect this mark to the mask on the burst line to create a side line for the front bodice. From the horizontal line, I draw another one at 1.5 cm outside it. It's the half of the width of the button in the buttonhole area that I want. After that, I keep drawing another line at 3 cm from the second one, which is the width of the button in the buttonhole area. And we will have the front bodice part and after cutting. I add 1 cm for seam allowance at the button in the buttonhole area, the neckline and the shoulder line. I add one and a half centimeter for seam allowance at the sleeve line, the side line, and the ending line. Moving to the back bodice pattern, I copy the front bodice pattern without the button and the buttonhole area to the paper foot. From the straight line at the shoulder, I draw another one at six centimeter on the right side, so the back bodice will be six centimeter longer than the front bodice. From the cutting point between the new straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up a centimeter, which is one by five the next side. I keep making another mark at 23 cm on the straight line, which is a half of the shoulder side plus a half cm. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 4.5 cm, which is 1 by 10 the shoulder side. Then connect the end of the perpendicular line to the first mark on the straight line to create a shoulder line for the back bodice. Make sure the width of the shoulder line at the front and the back bodice will be the same. From the cutting point on the horizontal line, I mark to the left side 4 cm, which is 1 by 10 the next side. It's also the deep of the neck at the back bodice. Then drawing a curved line from that mark to the first one on the straight line to create a neck line for the back bodice. I continue the perpendicular line at the shoulder to cut the burst line at one point. From the cutting point, I mark to inside 1 cm, then connect this mark to the end of the shoulder line. After that, I mark in 1 by 3 of this slanted line, then I draw a curved line from the mark on the burst line to this mark and finish at the end of the shoulder line to create a slit line for the back bodice. 
from the marks on the horizontal line, I keep making another one at 10.6 cm, which is the quarter of the bird's side plus 1 cm. It's the length of the yoke area at the back borders. From the cutting point between this line and the sleeve line, I mark down on the sleeve line around 0 0.7 to 1 cm. Then redraw from that mark to the straight line I just made before. And we will have the back borders part enough to cut thing. I add 1 cm for seam allowance at the neckline and the shoulder line, 1.5 cm for seam allowance at the sleeve line, the side line, and the ending line. You need to cut this pattern in full fabric at the horizontal line, and the yoke area needs to be cut to pieces in the grain line this way. To make the sleeve pattern, I measure the width of the sleeve line at the front and the back borders first. After that, I draw a straight line and a folding horizontal line cutting each other. From the cutting point, I mark to the right side 12.6 cm, which is 1 by 10 the bird side plus 3 cm. Then drawing a slanted line from this mark and cut the straight line. Make sure the width of the slanted line is the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back border that I just checked before. I divide this slanted line into three equal parts. From the middle of the first two parts, I draw an outside perpendicular line with 2 cm length. From the middle of the third part, I draw an inside perpendicular line with a half cm length. Then drawing a curved line to this mark to create the sleeve line for the sleeve pattern. From the top of the sleeve line, I mark at 25 cm on the folding horizontal line, which is the length of the sleeve that I want. From the cutting point between the new straight line and the folding horizontal line, I mark up 20 cm, which is the half width at the end of the sleeve that I want. Then connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to create the underarm big line of the sleeve pattern. And here is the sleeve pattern after cutting. To make the front part of the sleeve pattern, I move one underarm big line inside the other one 1 cm foot, then redraw the sleeve line later. And we will have the sleeve pattern after cutting. I add one and a half cm for seam allowance at the underarm big line and the sleeve line. I add five cm for seam allowance at the ending line. Moving to the collar pattern, I measure the width of the neckline at the front and the back borders pattern foot. Then I draw a straight line and a horizontal line cutting each other later. From the cutting point, I mark to one side of the horizontal line 24 cm which is the total width of the neckline at the front and the back border that I just checked before, then drawing a straight line to that mark. From the cutting point between the new straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up to cm. Then I mark in one by three the width between two marks on the horizontal line before drawing a curved line to this mark and finish at the one on the second straight line. Based on this curved line, I draw another one that is 3 cm away in parallel with it. 3 cm is the height of the color stand that I want. From the second straight line, I draw another one at 2.5 cm from it. This new line will cut the second curved line at one point. Then I connect that cutting point to the end of the first curve line by another curve line. After that, I measure the length from the cutting point to the horizontal line to mark the same length from the horizontal line to the first straight line. I measure again the length from the new mark to the cutting point between the straight line and the second curve line. Then make another mark with the same length. After that, I draw a curve line that is opposite with the second one. From the cutting point between this new curved line and the first straight line, I draw a horizontal line. I also mark up 4.5 cm from this cutting point which is the length of the color that I want. Based on that mark, I draw a new horizontal line. This new horizontal line will cut the second straight line at one point. 
From this cutting point, I mark up one centimeter, then connect that mark to the one on the second curve line. I mark one between the last horizontal line first, then drawing a curve line from that mark to the one on the second straight line that I just made before. And we will have the color pattern up to cutting. I add one centimeter for seam allowance after that, except the first straight line, as you will cut this pattern in the full fabric at that line. Now let's start sewing this shirt. I started with the back bodice part foot. After cutting one piece of the lower part and two pieces of the yoke, I connect them together. Make sure the lower part will be in the middle between two yoke pieces and sewing. After the first seam, I make an over-sticking seam to keep on the end fabric at one side. To make the front pocket, I cut a rectangle with 18cm length, which is the height of the pocket blood 5cm for seam allowance, and 14cm wide, which is the width of the pocket blood 3cm for seam allowance. From the top width line, I draw a line at 5cm under it. After that, I fold the top width line inside 1cm foot. Then keep folding it to the line I just drew before and sewing. After that, I use the iron to create the folds at three sides of the pockets. I put the pocket to the left side piece of the front bodice right at the heart and sewing. And here are two pieces of the front bodice. I connect them to the back bodice at the shoulder of one yard piece by the pink first. After that, I roll the rest of the shirt from the end to the top, then move the other yoke piece over it to connect the shoulder together. So the shoulder of the front bodice will be in the middle between two yoke pieces and sewing. After that, I turn on the seam inside and make the over stitching seam to keep on the end fabric to one side. Moving to the sleeve, I draw a line at 9cm from the ending line, which is two times the seam allowance that I kept before, blood 1cm for seam allowance. I finish the end of the sleeve by folding the end fabric inside 1cm foot, then keep folding again to the line just drew before and sewing. I connect the sleeve of the bodice to the sleeve line. After sewing, I cut the extra fabric at the end of the bodice part in half.
After that, I fold the end of the fabric at the sleeve part to the cutting. Then keep folding it again to the bodice and sewing. I use the same technique to finish the underarm big line in the side line of the shirt. Moving to the button and the buttonhole area, at the right side P of the front bodice, which is the button side, I draw a line at 7cm inside the edge line. It's two times the width of the button area that I want, plus 1cm for seam allowance. After that, I fold the end fabric inside 1cm foot, then keep folding it to the line I just drew before, and sewing. At the buttonhole area, I cut off the buttonhole part from the pattern and just keep 1cm for seam allowance. So I cut a folding rectangle with 4cm width, which is the width of the buttonhole area plus 1cm for seam allowance. And the same length with the front part at that area. I added the interfacing at one side of the folding rectangle to make the buttonhole area thicker. I connect one end of the folding rectangle to the bodice foot. After that, I fold the other end of the folding fabric inside 1cm, then fold it to the seam I just made before, and sewing. To finish the end of the shirt, I fold the end fabric inside 1cm foot, then keep folding it again, and sewing. Moving to the collar, I connect two pieces of the collar together at two sides in the top line foot. After that, I turn them inside to hide on the seam and use the iron to keep on the folding seam and make it nicer. Then, making an over stitching seam after that. After that, I connect the ending line of the collar to two pieces of the collar stand. Make sure the collar will be in the middle between two collar stand and keep one centimeter unsold at two end of the collar stand. I make a few small cuts at the curve line at two sides of the collar stand before turning them inside. Oh. 
I also add the interfacing at one side of the color stain to make it thicker. Now I'm connecting one color stain to the neckline foot. Make sure to keep one centimeter extra for seam allowance at two ends of the color stain and sewing. After that, I sew to connect two ends of the collar stain together. I fold the end of the collar stain inside one centimeter foot, then keep folding it to the first seam and make the second seam. The last step is adding the button and creating the buttonhole. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. It looked not too bad on my husband and it wasn't that easy to ask him to be my model. But I'm glad he loved it. Hope you guys will like it and try it out soon. See you in the next video.